No, the RODECast Pro is not multi-track, but that doesn't mean that it's not a great deal and it's not a great piece of gear. An update to my original review of the RODECaster Pro is coming up next. Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. Thank you guys so much for being here. Also wanna remind you, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Just click that subscription link and you are set to go for all the content coming on the channel this year. If you like the video, be sure, smash the thumbs up button. All right, now that we got that out of the way, let's get into it. So many of you checked out my Roadcaster Pro review. If you haven't seen that, I'm going to put a link to it right up here and actually I think it'll be right up here um, you can check that out first if you want to watch that before you watch this video but here's what we want to talk about when I put up the last video I mean it's gotten so many views I think it's almost 20,000 views now and so many comments and I appreciate every single one of you guys that have watched it and commented and asked a question but the main thing seems to be that the Rodecaster Pro is not a multi-track recorder meaning that if you want to do your podcast with the roadcaster pro it records to an internal sd card that is a stereo channel only so if you're a podcast show that has multiple guests or even if it's just you and you might have some other audio sources coming in like an interview or a segment or something like that it's all going to be recorded to a 2448 stereo file, meaning that in post, you're not gonna have those individual channels like multi-track offers if you've got guests and somebody says something and everybody's talking at the same time, but let's say somebody coughs or does some, or says something, uses a word that you don't want set out over the air on your podcast, then with multi-track, you can go in and simply remove that without removing everything else. But with a stereo file, you're not allowed to do that. It is just one file and everything's in it. So when you want to edit something out, you're editing out everything that was happening at the moment. I know for a lot of you guys that do a more traditional style podcast, that being able to edit in post is crucial. And I do want to say, if that is what you're doing, this is not the system for you. Let me say it again, because I, I got hammered for being a road shill on the last video and that's okay but what I want to tell you is that for the application that I use it for which was the review that I did I don't like to do reviews on how you may use the equipment I, I don't know how you're going to use the equipment I do them based on how I use them my podcast is done live we are live every Tuesday night at 6 p.m. on YouTube Twitch and Facebook so I am producing on the fly. I've got my hotkeys set up. I've got sound effects. I may have interview, a pre-recorded interview set up on one of the hot buttons over here, but everything's live, so I'm producing this on the fly. This is perfect for what I do. I'm also gonna talk at the end of the video about another use for the Rodecaster Pro, so stick around for that. But back to you guys that do more traditional style podcasts and you want that ability to be able to edit in post and edit everything together and then upload it uh, to wherever it, is, wherever it is that you upload your podcast to. This is probably not gonna be the thing for you on the nose, but are there options? Yes, there are options. Look, some of you are not going to like what I'm about to suggest, but I'm going to suggest it anyway, and I'm going to point back to a couple of the things that I said in the previous video about the cost. This Rodecaster Pro is $599. It's $600. I was thinking about a workaround for some of you guys that, one, I got a comment from somebody that needed more channels. They needed more than four microphone inputs because they do campaign type stuff and political stuff or you're out on the road and you want to be able to you're in a setting where you're going to be interviewing maybe 10 people at one time or you've got a reporter out over here you've got people spread out you've got all of those audio sources coming into one unit and you may want or need more than four channels on the nose like I said this may not be for you but I also want to make a suggestion real quick because of the multiple output options on the Rodecaster Pro Think about this. 
What if you had two Rodecaster Pros? Okay, follow me here. I know it's twice the price. That would make it $1,200. But I also want to want to mention this. Think about this. With twice the price comes twice the functionality. And I want to review this real quick. Think about this. You could have one Rodecaster Pro going out USB to your computer and you could tell whatever software you're using on your computer to select the USB source on the Rodecaster Pro and then that gives you access via USB to all four mic channels, all of the individual hot button keys over here, uh, four headphone out uh, outputs and a main output. It also gives you the ability to record whatever's going on here with these four channels. Also four channels of Class A, Aphex, processing across all of your mic inputs with EQ, limiter, DS or compressor, uh, the, the patented Aphex Big Bottom and Oral Exciter. Now let's say you had another one sitting right next to it. That gives you an additional four channels of Class A mic pre's with all of the bells and whistles. The Aphex, the compressors, DSers, limiters, everything. Also it gives you access to another set of hot buttons, right? So that's two, four, six, eight. That would give you 16 hot buttons that you would have access to. It would give you eight mic pre's. It would give you two USB sources, two TRS sources, and two Bluetooth sources. So you would double all of the ins and outs for $1,200. On this second unit, you would not use the USB out, but you would use the TRS out and go to the microphone input of your PC or your Mac or whatever computer it is that you're using to house and go into to store all your files or record all your files uh, or if you're podcasting or live streaming to be able to capture that audio to send out to your stream. So think about that for a second. If you had two, that gives you double of everything. It gives you 16 hotkeys, eight mic pre's, two uh, USB audio devices, two TRS, and to Bluetooth as well, plus two different audio sources coming out and into your PC or Mac. Look, I know it's expensive. That would be $1,200, but let's break that down for just a second. We talked before in the other video, the cost of one Aphex channel alone is $1,000. I've got one in my other room in there. This has basically four Aphex channels on it because you've got that Aphex processing across all four channels of your Class A mic inputs. If you had two of these side by side, that gives you eight channels of it. If you were to go to Sweetwater or any of the other audio gear suppliers and you were to buy eight Aphex channels, it's gonna cost you $8,000. So if you really wanna do a professional podcast or you wanna do a professional live stream and you need more functionality, than just one Rodecaster Pro can provide. Maybe you need more inputs, you need more sources, and you need more output. Then maybe adding a second Rodecaster Pro is the trick for you. Sticking on this thought of being multi-track, look, I'm gonna say it just like everybody else is saying it in the comment section. I don't understand why Rode did not build multi-track functionality with the first shipment of this product out. I mean, I understand it if you're going TRS out to something that's going to be a stereo channel. Uh, but they could have built multi-track into the internal recorder to the SD card, but let's say they chose not to even do that. With this being connectable to your PC or Mac via USB, every other USB audio interface on the planet pretty much is multi-track. I don't understand why they couldn't have built multi-track functionality into the Rodecaster Pro with the first shipment. Now, down in the comment section on the original video, I went back and forth with several people about this not being multi-track, but what some other options were, but more importantly, why Rode didn't do it and if we think they're gonna do it in the future. I think that based on the results of releasing the Rodecaster Pro and the things that have been said and the comments and the interaction that's been going on, I think that in the future, Rode will do one of two things. I think Rode will either do a firmware and software update and upgrade to the current version of the Rodecaster Pro to make it multi-track, or 
they're going to come out with a second unit that probably has eight channels or 10 channels or 12 channels that will be multi-track. I think that's coming. Remember guys, this was a flagship, right? There's nothing else out there like this on the market. Sure, Zoom has the L12, but it doesn't have the hotkeys. It doesn't have all of the functionality, the processing and the effects on the Rodecaster Pro are far better than anything else out there on the planet. Remember guys, this was a flagship. It's the first of its kind, just like phones or any computers, any other kind of tech. Rode will listen to its customer base, and I guarantee you this is the first of many in a succession and a line that is to come of products that are made for podcasting and live streaming. So it's not gonna surprise me at all if sometime either this year or early next year, we see more products like the Rodecaster Pro from Rode that do offer some of these functionalities that the Rodecaster Pro didn't, mainly multi-track. I can't think of anything else or another negative about the Rodecaster Pro. I, a lot of people got on to me because they said I, wa I was just nothing but a positive review. The reason for that is, is because I can't think of any other negative. They covered every base here. I mean, honestly, think about it for a second. If this had had multi-track from the get-go, this would be the perfect, undeniable podcast and live stream solution for audio. It just would. So I'm sorry it didn't come multi-track, and I'm sorry that that upsets most of you because I know it's keeping a lot of you from purchasing it. I will say, keep a close watch because I think Rode is listening. As a matter of fact, I know they're listening for a fact, and I know this is bothering them. Watch for a firmware software update to enable multi-track in this in the future or the possibility of a larger unit, maybe, of course, at a higher price point that does come with multi-track. Now that we've got the fact that this thing doesn't have multi-track out of the way, I want to go back to the original video and talk about my use. My podcast is live, so it's perfect for me, which also got me thinking about another use for the Rodecaster Pro and why I have a second one on the way. Over the last year, I've gotten huge into gaming and live streaming and streaming my gameplay on Twitch. I absolutely love to do it. it it's, you know, for somebody like me that stays so busy, and it's almost my downtime. It's like what I do to literally grab the cord and unplug and just go have some fun. In my gaming setup, it's, it's rather complicated. I've got the microphone, I've got the mixer, I've got the PC, and all of that audio has to route in and out where people that I'm playing with in-game can be able to hear the audio, but then also people that are watching the stream on live, I have to provide and send all that audio to another location so that people watching live can hear that audio as well. So it is a constant in and out routing issue. So if you want to be able to stream your gameplay with like OBS Live or any one of the other live streaming uh, software support systems for your PC or Mac, you're going to have to have multiple solutions. One of the things that I decided was that I'm going to get rid of all that and I'm going to get a second Rodecaster Pro because it's gonna make it so much easier. I can go USB out of this into my computer, use that audio input for certain things, but then also reroute that audio back out of my computer from the audio output into the Rodecaster Pro that this already has Mix Minus built into it, so we're not gonna get that delay when I've got audio coming in from the computer and then from the Rodecaster Pro back into the computer and delivering that out to people that are watching live. With that Mix Minus built in, here it makes it a lot easier. I have to have two, uh, yeah, at least two cables in my other mixer in the stream room to make sure that that audio doesn't cause a Mix Minus problem and offer that delay and feedback that you often get when you've got those repetitive audio sources. So if you're a gamer or you're a streamer and you're on YouTube gaming or Twitch or any of those kind of things streaming your gameplay, I'm going to tell you that the Rodecaster Pro is definitely for you. Because I will say, I do think that this, this Rodecaster Pro is better for live streaming than it is for podcasting because so many of you that do traditional podcasts, you aren't doing them live. You're pre-recording them, you're editing them in post, 
and then you're delivering the podcast audio to wherever it is that you want people to listen to your podcast, whether it's Apple Podcasts or Spotify or SoundCloud or anywhere else. So I will say, I'll admit, this may not be the perfect podcast solution, but if you're a live streamer and you do your live stream live, and you do your podcast live, or you're a gamer, and you want that amazing audio sound, and you want to deliver the best product and experience that you can to your live viewers via Twitch or YouTube gaming, this is by far the perfect solution for you. So just to wrap up this review, guys, I, yes, it does not have multi-track recording, but that does not make this a bad product. It doesn't make it an unusable product. It may make it not perfect for your specific application, but I'm telling you, this is a powerful piece of equipment. I would give it probably for 2019, one of the most innovative pieces of equipment out there. Podcasting is on the rise. Live streaming is going through the roof. And if you do it more traditionally, you're gonna have to have five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 pieces of equipment to do what this one piece of equipment will do. So don't let the fact that it doesn't have multi-track recording available right now keep you from purchasing this. Find the application for it and use it. Maybe adapt it into what you're doing. And if you're already live streaming or you're already live streaming your gameplay or your podcast like mine is live, this is the solution for you. Hands down, no doubt about it. Guys, thank you so much for checking out the video today. I wanted to do a quick review, and this review is based 100% on all of the comments and questions that you guys posted in the previous video, which I will link right up here. If you haven't watched that video, click on that card and go check it out, and you'll get some context, and maybe then you can come back and watch this video again. Guys, thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you got something out of it. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, please, I enjoy every Every comment that you leave and I read every question and I respond to every single one of them and on the other video it was like 200 and something we're up to so yes I respond to every single one of them thank you guys for that if you got something out of the video be sure and smash that thumbs up button let me know that you like it if you haven't already please subscribe to the channel and then click that bell icon next to it so that you're notified every time I upload new content. Also, you can follow me on social media at The Steve Freeman everywhere. And a reminder, The Steve Freeman Podcast is live every Tuesday night, 6 p.m. Central. Simulcast to YouTube, Twitch, and Facebook. You can always catch up on demand on YouTube and on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Guys, thank you so much. See you in the next one.